Robert Stoffel Law Group. Brent Jones, owner of uh, Real Water, give them a round of applause. George Carson, owner of AllTalkRadio.net. Go ahead. <laughs> and of course, we've got the wonderful, talented Mr. Kevin Wall from Battleborn Radio. And let's give yourself a round of applause for being here. So we have all we have all members here. So we got everybody signed in. I just want to thank the members and the uh, panel for being here again. Give yourselves a round of applause. So now let me bring up for the invocation, Tony Baca. Give him a round of applause. So if you guys know how live I agree. Good morning. The Lord is so important, and uh, you know I just want to share something real quick that I come here. This morning, after getting this email from a person I've been doing business with, and they like turned at the last minute, you know, and the, the integrity issue in our country is so bad sometimes. And I just, you know, this morning I just cry out to the Lord for all of us, for this country and all of us. That's why I'm here. I'm, I'm, inside I'm upset, but sometimes we need that to be that upset to do something, you know, and to pray. So this morning uh, I just want to lift the, this situ this time up to the Lord. So, Lord. Um, we are a nation that needs you. We're individuals that need you. And Lord, we call on you this morning to be present in a great way, that your Holy Spirit would work amongst the hearts of the men and women that come here today. Lord, that as truth is sought out by the questions, issues that are very important to our city and our state, Lord, are brought out and asked. We pray that those coming and running for different elected seats, Lord, that you would put on their hearts to be completely honest and to share who they are and their intentions. And those things would come to light. And because they come to light in the right way, Lord, that the panels would vote correctly according to your will. That we would end up with men and women that would serve you and in serving you, they would serve the state and the people of the state in this country. We just thank you now and dedicate this time to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. And still stand here. I've got a wonderful man to my right, Mr. Nathan. Mason, I mean, Mason. How do you say the last name? Fauci. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> He's standing there. So Nathan's going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, right? All right, you want to take the microphone, sir? There you go. It's all yours. Tell everybody. Put your hand over there, what? The flag's back here. Here it is back there. Where's the back? <laughs> and point the way to the, the flag. flag. To the flag of the United States of America to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, in justice, and liberty for all. Everybody say fun. Fun. There you go. And we're going to have fun today. So um, I'm excited to be here. I'm your moderator, Mr. Kevin Child. Somebody calls me Child, but I'll listen to anything, but uh, that's no big deal. So we have our panelists here. I want to recognize them. Uh, hey, with this. I'm going to come out here. All right. So who do we have here? Mr. Robert Faust. Give him a round of applause. We have Pamela Keaton. Give her a round of applause. Thank you for being here. 
Mr. Doctor Conquest. How you doing, Doctor? Good. Let me give him a round of applause. Mr. Scott Lafada, give him a round of applause. Mr. Patrick Llewellyn, give him a round of applause. And Michael Broadway, give him a round of applause. Give him a round of applause. Give him a round of applause. Okay, good. I have it, so I'm jealous. <laughs> we missed one. We missed one. We missed one. Oh, I'm Mr. Tim Pantera, give him a round of applause. Thank you so much. I want to thank Veterans of Politics for putting on this. It's amazing what the Veterans of Politics have done. They're very um, involved in our community and our Veterans Matter. Everybody say Veterans Matter. Veterans yes. Matter. Yes, they do, because we wouldn't be here without them. We would have this great country that we live in. So I'm very proud to be a part of that. Oh, did I hit? There we go. So we've got our first one coming up here, and it would be the Board of Regents. In here, go to this. So I'm ask, I want to ask the panel, I think there was in a communication gap, but our Board of Regents that represents six, he's here right now. Would you guys allow him with a show of hands to be on this panel right now? Three. It looks like consensus have it. Mr. Uh, Board of Regent, Mike Wixon, would you please come up? Give him a round of applause. <laughs> and we have Patrick Carter. <laughs> Give him a round of applause for showing up. I'm gonna go over some guidelines. I know some of you know all this stuff and you go, yeah, I'm just gonna go over it. I'm the moderator. We must have time. Time is of the essence. Uh, we'll begin the proceedings 10 minutes ahead. The first scheduled interview um, to allow for the invocation, like we just did, uh, a pledge of allegiance, and introductions, which we just did. We're going to introduce uh, our panelists. Remind the panelists that candidates before each interview, this is an interview, not a debate. You guys get that? It's not a debate. It's an interview. <laughs> Good. You have 30 seconds uh, to answer the qu question, one minute answer. So 30 seconds to answer, then one minute to answer. Each panelist will allow one question per interview. Uh, the question will be directed at one candidate unless the question can be answered with a yes or a no. Panelists will have 30 seconds to pose their question. Interviews will be given one minute to respond. One time permits. Uh, once, once time permits, um, questions will be taken from the audience. Does everybody understand that? Yes. Then let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> okay, so who gets the questions first here? Where we start? Mr. Broadway over there. I have a question. Go ahead. What's that? Yes. I'm sorry. Um, for clarification, are they both running for State Region University District 6? Yes, they are. I apologize for that. Thank you for holding me to a higher office. <laughs> So I'm okay. What's that? This, this is the this is District Six, Board of Regents, um, State University, District Six. We have Patrick Carter. Raise your hand, so I know you're here. And Mike Wixom here. Good. So let's go ahead. Hi guys, how you doing? Very well. All right. Well, my question is for Mr. Carter, and uh, I'd like to know uh, what you find the three three top items in District 6 that we're going to address and what's wrong and how you intend to fix it. Okay. Um, so, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Turn on the mic. Turn on the mic on if you can. There we go. <laughs> so the top three issues for District 6. Um, right now, there's kind of an imbalance, I, I believe, between you know, preference for our two big universities, UNLV and UNR, in the budgeting process, and that would be something that would be controlled by the Board of Regents. Uh, and I would consider that to be a pretty big issue there. Uh, a couple other issues, um, you know, there's been kind of a, a, a disenfranchisement by some people uh, that work at community colleges to the point that they want to break up uh, the Board of Regents. I believe that you know, the Board of Regents, the current Board of Regents, has to take some responsibility for that. Um, and understand maybe it's a lack of communication, just a lack of, of preference, or giving preferential treatment to our big universities over our community college you know, system. Um, and by kind of switching up that board, breaking up the current board that they have right now, 
hopefully that imbalance will be fixed and hopefully everyone will feel like they're heard at the table more so I know they're Third issue is, is really just cooperation. There's this great article in the paper that came out a few days ago, Nevada State and CSM working together to design a medical building. Finish your statement, go ahead. Uh, they're working together to build a medical building. I'd love to see more cooperation between our different <coughs> colleges and institutions in Nevada. <coughs> Next, please. Yes, uh, Mr. Wixian, could you please respond to that question as well? Yeah, I think it's a good question. And first, I want to congratulate Patrick. We've only spoken by telephone once in this last year, but I, I do need to take issue, though. I, I think it's a profound error to break up the system as it's presently completed. And I think we need to be very, very careful to jump on that bandwagon. I've been involved in this for some time. What, the, what happens with the budgeting process is if we break up the community colleges, that gives more voice, not less voice. That, well, it gives more voice to the universities. The way that we're configured now, because of the budgeting process, and by the way, the regions have no control over the budget. That's all dominated by the legislature and the governor. All we can do is put forward proposal, proposals and pray, which is what we do. So we need to be careful with that. If we break up the system, then the community colleges will be drowned out by the two institutions. Because for one system now, the voice is is curved larger. Now, I do believe there are issues with respect to the community colleges. We created a subcommittee within the board that's chaired by Andrea Anderson that's, that's tasked specifically to address community college issues. But we need to be careful because we've done a lot. We moved about $15 million from the institutions in the north to the south as a result of the funding formula, the committee on which I sat three years ago. So we've made enormous progress, but I don't want to break up the system. Mistake. Thank you. Next panelist, you please uh, say your name, the panelist that's going to ask the question. We really appreciate that. Thank you. So, next panelist. This mic black. Check, 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 test. <clears throat> Good morning. My name is Scott Lafada, and I'm with uh, Citizens for a Better America. Uh, Patrick, I'm going to ask you this question first, and then we're going to move on to my comments. But uh, we're in the midst of a presidential election, and several other Republican candidates have mentioned that they prefer to downsize drastically or reduce the influence or even eliminate the Department of Education. Patrick, what's your position on that and thoughts? Well, I think eliminating the Department of Education would probably be a mistake. There's, um, there needs to be a common uniting theme between all of our states so that all the states are not running in totally different directions and on higher education and K-12 education. So having that central body to kind of control that is, is useful. I think probably where most of the issues arise is that the federal government uses money as a way of trying to enforce and uh, get the universities and the schools to conform to what they want to do. And depending on whoever is in office, that may or may not be something that is, is good for the edu higher education system or for K-12 education. Okay, great. Mike, uh, next. Uh, I would oppose a breakup, uh, but I think we need to be careful. I, there's, a, there's assumption an assumption, especially at that level, to, that somehow if we break something up or we change something that way, it's going to make a real difference for us in Nevada. And I don't think it will. My focus is Nevada and what we can do in Nevada. And there are some changes that we need to make in Nevada. And there are some, there are some positive things that we can do. Patrick just mentioned the cooperation agreement that they have between Nevada State College and, and CSN, which is wonderful. And we could do more. We're working hard on the board now to, uh, on a common registration platform, for example, where students can take courses wherever they're at, at any of the institutions, which is a very positive thing. So my focus isn't so yeah, much nationally as it is as as it is locally. Thank I you. think that's where the issue is. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thanks, panelists. State your name. Uh, Dr. Fred Conquest, and I'm from CSM. I'm also an executive director of Citizens for Better America. I had a question for Mike. You've been on the Board of Regents for a long time, and <clears throat> what I find is that the Board of Regents go out of their way to make it much more difficult for students to uh, get an education in, in Nevada, and the NISHI system is uh, 
very money specific, would you be in favor of a forensic audit of all of the colleges? Oh, I don't have a problem with that, and, and I think, but I, I do take issue with the notions that, that, that the Board of Regents is trying to prevent students from doing their best or getting an education, because that, in my view, is absolutely not true. As I said just a minute ago, we tried to initiate a system-wide registration on the registration platform for all students. I was, I was chair of the board from 2007 through 2009 when, when we took a 30% cut in state-funded education, and that was an enormous challenge for us. I worked very, 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 very hard to ensure that we had adequate resources. But I don't have a problem with auditing any. I think that's a very positive thing. Um, and and I, I think we do need to take a close look at what we're doing. It is a big system, and I appreciate that. And CSN is a big part of the system. We have like 40,000 students at CSN, and they're critical. But it creates some complicated processes that we have to face. But, but I do believe we work very hard, and I know I have on the board. Can we have a follow-up? Sure. <coughs> um, Steve, that's up to Steve. Oh. Yeah, we can have a follow-up on that. OK. Uh, for example, uh, the CSM, we had eight counselors for 40,000 students. There was none at Henderson campus. Yet you guys approved hiring a bunch of uh, assistant vice presidents and uh, essentially administratives when the real need was counselors. Can you comment on that? Sure. I mean, I said throughout the years that we need more counselors. A lot of, and I'm not trying to pass the buck in terms of what we're doing, but when, when the president comes to us from an administrative perspective and says, we need administrative help, we respond to the president's request. CSN is very thin administratively. We're very thin, at, if you take a look at CSN compared to other institutions across the country, we're still thin administratively. And it's easy to take a look and say, that's waste, or that's waste, and we need more counselors. Of course we need more counselors. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And I've talked to President uh, Richards about that many times, and we've talked about it on the board. But it's, it, I think it's somewhat unfair to say that, oh, you've hired all of these administrators when we need counselors. Well, we do need counselors, but by the same token, we do need administrators. And, and if you take a look at CSN, on the whole, we're relatively thin from an administrator. Hi. Gentlemen, my name is Tim Batar. As a millennial and a college student, I'd like to ask you a question about political correctness on campus. I find it getting in the way of education and critical thinking, and really just kind of making it where if you were on the wrong side of the aisle, so to speak, or you know, polit politically, it just kind of makes things harder between your teachers and other students and uh, just the atmosphere in general on campus. Um, do you acknowledge this is a problem? And if you do, how would you fix it? Is that, who is that? Both of you. Oh, go ahead. So we get 30 seconds of peace then. Um, on where I work right now, I don't look like that's an issue. So it may be an issue more in the university system of public education than at, at the school that I work at, but um, I, I don't really see that as a, an issue right now at our school. Um, as, as far as you know, political meetings or stuff, we don't really bring that into Man, absolutely. Yes, it's a problem. Absolutely, it is absolutely a problem. I was reading an article just this morning about uh, political correctness, and, and I, I think it is an issue because we tend to insulate our students from reality when we do that, and that, that troubles me. Uh, I, I believe our society is is too focused on political correctness, and certainly it's an issue on campus. So I agree. Thank you. Hold on for one second. We just had another panelist come in, Rowena Grifferton. Can you guys give her a round of applause? Thank you for joining us. Next panelist, state your name and question, please. My name is Pamela Cage, and I represent uh, Evolution Travel. My question is for Patrick, as your first run here. I uh, wanted to ask you, what's driving your uh, candidacy? I mean, what, what issues do you see most significant, and what do you want to do about it? So I, I think I can be helpful in higher education. I think that's uh, an area that I have 
experience in. I do have a doctorate in business administration as well as some doctoral classes in higher education administration. And I'm a college administrator right now. So I bring that side to the table. But at the same time, I don't have a particular allegiance to UNLV or UNR or you know, uh, any of the particular colleges. I guess if anything, since I'm close to Nevada State and CSN and Henderson, I might have a little bias towards them. But uh, I feel like I can help there. I am. Uh, I want to make sure that our, our education system matches what we currently need in the state of Nevada. Uh, we need to be more responsive to technological things like Tesla coming in and making programs that uh, meet those needs. Um, you're already on the board. So. I, know. <laughs> uh, I have. Can get I ask one a separate question? question? Let's get, no, get one question. Okay. Sorry. No problem. Hello. Good morning. My name is Robert Faust. What seems to be the problem with the sports uh, administration over there? And does not UNLV not have some pretty good egg on its face right now with the basketball hiring, with hiring the coach, and then a week later he leaves for somewhere else? What, what, what was the real problem with that? Didn't it come down to the regents that they wouldn't approve the contract or it took them too long to do it? Ma'am? Well, number one, the regents, under our policies, that is absolutely not Case. It's actually, we went through the board. Uh, the chair of the board is Rick Trachok. Rick put the contract on the agenda as soon as he got it. And so I know there's been some reports to that effect, but I want to assure you, as one who was part of the process, that the board took a look at the contract immediately when it was presented to us. Under the open meeting law, we have to give the public five days' notice. Now, I, there, it's just a this is a question that deserves a long answer. I don't have a long time. Um, we don't have any control over the fact that somebody broke his contract and left. I mean, that's not, we, we put in place, I think, an, an excellent template, and they owe us a million dollars. But I do have issues with the process. And, and I think, as a board, we need to take a look at the whole process that we went through in terms of hiring the guy in the first place. But I think it's wrong to try to put that on the board because we reacted as soon as we got the contract. I hope that answers your question. Patrick, what do you have to say? The, you only get one question, remember. Thank you, sir. State your name. Um, don't Pardon? you get one question for both parties? No, sir. You only get one question per, per person. What's your last week? We got away around. Okay, well, that's what it said in the guidelines, so I apologize. Carry on. Thank you, sir. I wasn't here earlier, so I don't know what questions were asked. So my question is, we have a lot of problem in our uh, educational system. Uh, we're like at the bottom. What are you gonna do to um, improve that? I don't know if this was asked before. Who is that, Director? Well, well, my first So, I mean, there are a lot of problems in K through 12 education, and I think one of the issues that we're currently having is that colleges and universities are expected to bring those folks up to speed when they leave K through 12 education. So we're seeing a lot more remedial English classes and a lot more remedial math classes uh, that we're having to add to, uh, you know, to our college curriculum before they can even get into college out or, or college level English. So I think you know it has to begin at K through 12, but at the same time, K through 12 changes take a long time, and a college would have to be responsive to those those needs to try to, to fix what K through 12 is trying to fix. May I respond? Hold on, we don't do yeah. Just one. Are you? It's a 30 second. Are you asking for both? So we can split 30 seconds. Okay, you can go ahead, reach it. First, Patrick's right. The biggest thing we could do for higher education is to improve the quality of the students coming out of the Clark County School District. We don't have any control over that. There are some things that we can do. Number one, counseling. And that's what we talked about, Fred, a few minutes ago. If we could improve the counseling, we have very few counselors, and we need that. One of the things, I wish I had more time, that we tried to do is put in place a student services computer pump model so the students could do, not self-counseling, but at least help them through the process. The number one thing we could do to keep students in place is to improve the first year retention rate. If we can keep kids in school during the first year, then they tend to stay longer and our graduation rates go up. Okay. Thank you. I 
we have a little bit of extra time, so if we want to go back, who wants to do another question? Would you guys raise your hand? Good. So I'll go ahead with our panelists. State your name and a question. My name is Robert Faust, and I have the same question that I had for uh, Mr. Wixie and Mr. Carter. So the, the basketball coach? Well, it's, it's actually the whole program over there. It's, the whole athletic department's a mess right now. The bottom line is, should we get rid of Tina Gunter Murphy and get a new AD? Take that, Patrick. First of all, the, the beard situation, I, I can't follow the Board of Regents. It seems like they followed their, their procedure and the, the coach of Belmont. It, it was a circumstance where that coach had a very strong tie to Texas and, and left. And the contract was good and hopefully we can use that million dollars to maybe fix the athletic program or at least start some things there. There are a lot of issues in the athletic program. The, the stadium, you know, is definitely probably top of your of your list. Trying to get a stadium on the campus. Um, coaching seems to be all kind of messed up. I think there was even a coaching position for another I don't know, it was softball or something else just posted the other day. So it seems like there's a lot of, of issues there. So it may be time to, to do that, but that would be generated from the president of the campus and not from the board of regents. Anybody else have a question? Dr. Conquest? Mr. Carter, um, you are familiar with um, what the Board of Regents does. And my take on the Board of Regents is they sort of just are there for political expediency. They're not much on uh, really leading what's going on. How would you improve the leadership quality in terms of, okay, initiate has a rule, everybody breaks the rule, and all the schools simply because there's no transparency, and there's no accountability. How would you fix that? Could, could you give me like one specific example? Okay, Nishi, Nishi has a rule about, um, on your contracts with, with, with teachers, yeah. that they, um, need to have so many hours of uh, office hours, they need to do community service, yet we have uh, teachers living in, say, Minnesota, teaching five online classes, they get, uh, and uh, uh, we're sending money outside the state, uh, and they're never involved face-to-face -face with any of the students. So many of them. A, really a, a rules reviewer or revision to match modern teaching you know, strategies. Since you have online teachers that may not conform to what on-ground instructors might be doing, you might need to rewrite the rules to affect. Well, it's just this one example. Uh, uh, the schools break the rules all the time and nobody does anything about it. Well, I guess I would have to ask Mr. Woodson as well. I don't know if there's a process in place, and if there's not, there needs to be one where you can report that at your level that rules are not being followed, so that information gets to the Board of Regents so, and then trickle back down to the President and the Chancellor so he can be held accountable to those rules. If those rules no longer fit the system, then they need to be rewritten or revised to match that system. But it takes people coming forward to report it, and if that reporting system is not in place, that probably would be something that would need to be fixed at the Board of Regents level. We got to move on to the next interview. It's time. I got a, I got a quick one. Okay, My so name is Michael Broadway. Are you guys for or against campus carry? Me, I'm against campus carry. I would be against as well. Okay, so I'm going to get direct this to both of you. You have two minutes to give why you should be elected. Who would like to go first? Okay. Thanks. I. First, I'm not on the Board of Regents for Political Expediency. Never have been, and I take great offense to that. I have chosen not to run for any other office. I don't do anything else except focus on the Board of Regents, and I want to make that absolutely clear. I am here because I love the state, and I love higher education, and I believe that I can make a difference here. I chose to run again because we're in the middle of some tremendously important issues, the medical school being one, common registration being one, 
a common registration platform being one, an integrated computer program, which I wish I had hours to tell you about, which was instituted by the Board of Regents and led by the Board of Regents, which I believe can transform Nevada. We have a long ways to go. Uh, there are a number of issues that we need to face, and it's a critical time in the state. I, I want to I say I respect and Patrick, I like Patrick very much, and I appreciate anyone who's willing to participate in this process because it's a critical process. But I can think of no greater thing that I could do for my state right now than serve on the board and to complete what we've been doing. I will say this, I'm very concerned as we go forward. We need to make sure that the medical school, for example, as important as that is, does not eclipse CSN or Nevada State College. That's so absolutely critical. And I believe that institutional knowledge that I carry can be very helpful in that regard. Because I desperately want to make sure that that medical school succeeds, but I also want to make sure that it doesn't eclipse what we're doing at Nevada State, and it doesn't eclipse what we're doing at CSN. We face enormous issues, and you're right, with respect to the athletics program. But it would be improper me, for me here to bring out a personnel issue because that would be a violation of our policies, and that's just not right. It, it's not fair to Tina, and it's not fair to Lynn, to the people involved, so I can't comment on that regard. But I do think it's issues. We do have rules in place. Finish her up? <laughs> okay, I'm not going to finish that thought, but I, I want you to know that uh, that I'm thrilled to be here, and I appreciate you. I have great passion for what I'm doing, and I want to complete what I've begun. And that's why I'm here, and that's why I'm part of the process. So thank you. I think there's there are a lot of things starting to form that are are good in, in for public education in the state. Um, I think in my first seven or eight years here, arguably, maybe there's not much good report. Lots of budget cuts. Lots of bad stuff. Stuff is starting to, to really form and, and really start to congeal, and hopefully uh, we can kind of move forward. The big issue seems to be kind of that balance between the two big institutions and everybody else kind of uh, playing second fiddle, including our largest institution, CSN. Um, so hopefully we can kind of bring more of a balance to that. The composition of the board may be part of that issue. It may be just be like or not. Communication is a breakdown, whatever that issue is, I'm hoping that by having maybe an outside person that doesn't particularly feel tied to any particular institution, but just interested in helping the state of Nevada will help kind of bridge that gap there. I do have two twin year, uh, five year old boys, and I want to make sure that you know, whenever they're ready for college, that our, our state is in really good shape, you know, for, for, for them. And we have great programs that match careers that are in this state, uh, that the technology, the faculty, everything is great. That gives them options whether they choose UNLV, choose UNR, choose CSN, choose the Great Basin Community College, whatever they choose, that those institutions are there for them that have programs that have careers and can be placed here. I have a lot of background in, in education and business, and I, I think this you know, essentially a volunteer opportunity is a great way for me to help the state of Nevada and higher education in the state. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for coming out. Thank you for supporting you. this process. You. you guys, enjoy your day. Behave yourself. If not be unruly, of course, right? So uh, we'll move on to our next. If you guys want to, work, you can hang around if you guys want. If the panelists want to ask you questions, please stay around. Stay around. Thank you so much. <laughs>